Coming to you live from the palatial studios of PBJ Productions. Welcome to Patrick and BJ Talk Real Estate, where we talk about life, the universe, and everything as it relates to real estate. Hey everybody, it's BJ. And Patrick. And we're back talking all things real estate. And uh, believe it or not, we sometimes don't talk about real estate because last time we even talked about stretchy pants. Oh yeah. Right. Well, this is how I in, in get, weight management. Right? I just and, have stretch, stretchy and, pants. And get how you get ready for Christmas dinner. Oh yeah. Right. And all, yeah. Or, how or how much we eat too much. Right. Or Thanksgiving or whatever it is. So, um, if you didn't see that, you can jump back and catch that one. So. <laughs> but today I don't think we're talking about stretchy pants, are we? No, we're talking about vacation properties. Okay, so that could involve stretchy pants at some point. Oh, yeah. When you start eating. Right? Yeah, put them on before you start eating, right? So you don't have to undo your belt or anything. Right. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay, so I have nine things to consider when buying a vacation property. Okay. So I would stick around to the end. I'm going to be talking more specifically about BC and taxes, but that I get into a little bit into the weeds on that. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, we've got some good highlights to think about to take into, take into consideration when you're looking at either like a second home, if it's a vacation home, um, and we go from there. Okay. So, so maybe let's start with that. What is a vacation property? Uh, well, it's going to be a part-time home considering um, that you would spend. It, w it wouldn't be your full-time residence. How about that? It wouldn't be your primary residence. Okay. It could be a condo. It could be a house. Right. It could be um, could be a, like a mobile home lot. Okay. Or um, and so, I mean, obviously, you as the owner can decide what you want to do with it. So you could, for example, you could live in it a few months out of the year. You could rent it out if you wanted to. You could do whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think those are some of those options that you have to consider. Um, how flexible the property is, <clears> but the rules <throat> that are are in that municipality or uh, in that jurisdiction. Uh, so if you want to, yeah, if you want to run something like a, a VRBO, what is that called? A, a vacation or rental or Airbnb or whatever, any is, one yeah. of those things or yeah. Yeah. So if, if it's uh, unoccupied, you might want to consider that if it's unoccupied for most of the year, or you just keep it for yourself Got and it. you just live with the costs that are involved. Okay. So, so you know what I want to know? Yeah. I want to know what are the top nine things I need to know about those vacation properties. Consider nearby tourist attractions when okay. buying a vacation home. Like Starbucks? I don't think that's a, Tim an Hortons? attraction. No? Okay. But um, I know people have uh, vacation homes. That would be, from my experience, they've been buying condos and they would have a vacation condo <clears throat> uh, in Victoria. Yeah. And Victoria has... it. it, it um, we have access to a lot of different attractions. Sure. You know, we've got whale watching here. We've got the BC Museum. It's an awesome museum. Yeah. Uh, if it's Bouchard Gardens or just live the lifestyle here yeah. for I, a little while, right? You know, yeah. And I even, I, I can think of one client where they, um, they bought a, their vacation property so they can be there in the summers and everything, but it's on the water. So they have a dock and everything else. Yeah. So they have that lifestyle access. And, and then they rent it out when they're not there. I grew up in Ontario, so people would be snowboarding to Florida. Okay. So yeah. I, I've met people that I know they from Alberta. So they would snowboard here instead yeah. of going to the States. Right. Um, but you want to think about that. If it's a lake property, um, how busy is it going to be during the tourist season? Right. So, uh, you know, from mm -hmm. there, uh, having that, uh, ex uh, set your expectations before you look at uh, locations considering a second property as a vacation property. Okay. All right. Accessibility and infrastructure. You know, I think we had this conversation when we were at Lake Couch in that one time about number one, you have to get there. Um, and then what infrastructure is there with, we were talking about even things like power, water, um, roads, internet. Yep. Right. Oh, if you want to work uh, vacation, work vacation. Yeah. Uh, what if you need a high speed? <clears throat> they might have regular internet. 
but if you need like a high speed, if you're doing a lot of uh, uploading or downloading right. kind of thing, like sure. us, uh, definitely a lot of things to consider there. Uh, accessibility. Tofino has a, uh, had water restrictions. Okay. So they weren't allowing, uh, not only did they have water restrictions, I think they stopped letting people come to Tofino for a few weeks until they had um, more store. water supply. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let alone uh, through the fire <clears throat> season, people were rerouted all the way through, I don't know, I can't remember, like the back end of some Port Alberni. Some logging road or some something. Some logging road yeah. all the way to like Souk or somewhere like that, right? right? Yeah. So you have, to, you have to take some of those things into consideration, especially here on the island where, oh, you know, we, we do face things like uh, we have dry summers. Yeah, so we're, we're like every year we have water restrictions mm -hmm. and, and of fires. And there's more I'm sure that we can cover, but then we would get specifics into like different locations if it's lakes or um or strata what if, what if you're on an island like i know we're on an island now but i'm just trying to think of like uh, uh if it's pender or salt spring yeah now you have um now you have another ferry you have a ferry or a plane or your own boat so accessibility mm -hmm. <clears throat> number three make sure it's an attractive neighborhood okay i mean i guess you know, my first thought when, when I think of vacation properties, I'm thinking something on the ocean um, in a nice, like by definition, that's a nice area. It could be. Right? Absolutely. But yeah, for sure. So you want to look around and see how uh, the neighborhood is and how the general area is and where it's headed. I think that what comes to mind, and it's not a, it's not a bad neighborhood, but yeah, we were up in Lake Cowichan and there's a there's a distinct difference between the homes on the water and the homes in the neighborhood. Okay. There's a big yeah. price difference and, and not just it being waterfront. Um, it, you have people that don't live full time on the lake. So some do of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's quite a bit more affordable in the rest of town. Right. So there's a, there's um, not a wage gap. Um, the property value gap. There's, really. a, there's a big property yeah. value gap. So not to say not to say that it's undesirable. It's just not on the same level as the vacation properties. Where right. downtown, if you got a condo, you kind of fit in with like the rest of like downtown Victoria. Yeah. So yeah, you just don't want to Bear Mountain. We've got vacation homes, condos. Yeah. We have the um, uh, the uh, not quarter share. Yeah, it's a it's a quarter share here. Of the golf course. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Over here in the next building. Yeah. And uh, it used to be like you have to drive through like Langford and it's like old, old homes on the north side and it just didn't look that good. Plus, you have to go past the racetrack and then you finally got up to like the nice clean boulevard. All of a sudden, everything changed. Right. Yep. And then um, but once you get up to like the condos and the, the fr a fractional ownership, that's what I was trying to think of. And uh, but you're in a beautiful neighborhood here. Right. So it kind of protects your investment. Yeah. And that area that you talked about in terms of the driving in part yeah. has changed considerably also. It has. Yeah. And is in the process of. I think knowing if you're looking at something, knowing what is the yeah. uh, direction it. the neighborhood That's is it. going. Yeah. Knowing what's coming up. Yeah. And, and the, whoever the governing body is uh, and what their vision is to, for the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. All right. We're on number four, reoccurring costs. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's in addition to the upkeep or do we, let's say in it, well, if it's a waterfront property, we talked about it, the increased costs of, uh, of maintenance on waterfront properties, mm -hmm. uh, but reoccurring costs, if you had a fractional ownership or Airbnb, uh, there's man management costs. If yeah. you're not doing it yourself or yeah. cleaning those yeah. kind of things. Um, I know cities are adopting because it's a fractional ownership. Uh, they're not paying a hotel tax. So they're finding ways to tax those types of properties mm -hmm. so they can put that towards affordable <clears> housing. <throat> so your, that, that jurisdiction, municipality, township might not be taxing that yet, but they might follow the footsteps of other, other jurisdictions. Okay. So just to keep in mind, um, without getting too far into it. All right. The ability, the ability to sell your home when you want to your vacation home. Yeah. So if it's in, um, uh, if, if it, if it's, 
if it's hard to finance or the turnover isn't quick, mm -hmm. consider that. Also, if the price range is quite high, it might take years to sell something. Yeah, sure. Just because the, I'm going to put it both, I, both ways. The buyer pool gets smaller as the price goes up. Yeah. So if you're thinking about selling your vacation property on one of these lakes and it's north of like, let's say $2 million. If you're thinking about selling it in a couple of years, I would start marketing it now. Right. That's how I would look at it because it might take two years to sell that. Sure. And then, of course, we don't know what the market's going to be exactly like. Um, so there's there you could be your liquidity could be restricted depending on what kind of vacation property you look at. Gotcha. Fractional ownership yeah. Yeah. Is, is quite tough as well or quarter shares. Yeah. So there's just again, there's just not as much demand for them. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. Better go back to my list. Ah. Is it the experience you're looking for in a vacation home? Very good. Right. Not just to have a place where you can like buy a piece of land and put a tent or a mobile or an RV on it. If that's the, if that's the lifestyle that you want, sure. But um, make sure that you don't lose interest or get bored, I think. Yeah. Well, I guess there's two parts to that. There's how much time are you going to spend in it? Yeah. And how much time are you using it as a rental if that's what you're doing with it? For some kind of short-term rental. Yeah, I don't um, want to think. I don't want to think about. I'm just thinking about like the personal sense of it. But you're right. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, th I guess that's the way to put it. Because my next point was renting your vacation home. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yeah. Again, it's like making sure um, you're falling in line with the municipal rules, and I know people don't always follow them. Uh, they go ahead and do it anyways. Like you just look up the Airbnb site and you'll see in, in Victoria, how many people, uh, would not fall under the, by, the city bylaws. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, just be careful. Look, look at all your options there. And then on top of that would be hiring a property manager if you're renting it out. Mm -hmm. Unless of course you want to do it yourself, but it gives you a bit of separation if you have a, like a, a a short-term rental property manager for that. Yeah, and it also depends where you are physically in comparison to the property. Right. So, so if, let's even say, let's say you live in Nanaimo and you're renting out, you have a vacation property in uh, Victoria. Do you want to drive down here every time somebody leaves? To, uh, to cleaning? Or to set, make sure everything's set up or to give them the keys or pick up the keys or all those things? No, not at all. And of course you have to weigh the, the cost and then the time involved with yep. that. And the last one would be uh, taxes. Okay. So welcome you to British taxes. Columbia. Yeah. We have speculation tax. Now there are exemptions for uh, a speculation. How about I put it this way? Speculation tax applies to residential properties, but it depends on uh, the geographic location of the property. Yeah. So okay. Victoria's <clears throat> falls under Vic yeah. Vancouver, Lower Mainland. Um, some, some, uh, I'm not totally aware of everything out there. Probably Kelowna. Yeah. Um, but and and on the island, it's spread from what it's conception inception to uh, to include places like Lake Cowichan. Nanaimo falls under that. Yeah. But guess what? It's in Lake Cowichan, excluding the waterfront properties. Okay. Yeah. So just knowing those kind of nuances, yeah, yeah. right? Sure. Um, and then, of course, knowing what kind of reoccurring costs that you're going to be looking at. Sure. If, if it does fall or if the tax does apply. So there's also an underused tax. That's a federal tax. This, I think this applies to uh, foreign ownership. And then um, if, you're a, uh, if you're a foreign buyer, it, like let's say you're an American and you want to buy a vacation property up yeah. here and it's it doesn't fall under like a residential zoning, um, but it falls under like a vacation property. It doesn't apply there either. So there's mm -hmm. there's these little exceptions that yeah, you need yeah. to find out. If you buy just like a, a regular residential property, yeah. you're going to be taxed. And then and um, and then as a foreign buyer, I know there's a ban now for two years federally, uh, but there's still exceptions around that. And I can't remember them all, but I have a list somewhere to keep track of all that. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the thing with that, if so, that would be like a 20% tax. And then, and then 
uh, if you go to sell and, and if you rented it out, you have to think about the, uh, the withholding, what is it called? It's not a withholding tax, but they will withhold funds to make sure your taxes are up to date upon completion. Yeah, so if you don't right. have enough equity in the property, yeah, you'll yeah. have issues closing. Sure. Yeah. But there's an easy way to fix that. But it seems that um, not everybody knows how to do those. Anyways, there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to buying a vacation yeah. property or a second property yeah. that you might use like a vacation property. So contact a professional like us and uh, we can answer questions like that. And if, um, if it's a specific property, if it's not like on Vancouver Island, we'll help you get in touch with somebody who's an expert in the area uh, that yeah, can help with that. For sure. Yeah. There's my so, list. Okay. There's nine things. All right. Nine things. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't, please take a minute to subscribe. We have a goal. Uh, the, our first goal is that we want to get over 100 subscribers. So um, if you can help us reach that goal, that would be great. And uh, let your friends know if you think there's people that would get some value out of what we talk about. <clears throat> um, we're happy to have them jump in. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in or reach out to us directly. And we're happy to answer those questions as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you in the next video. See you.